Okay, so now we're going to figure out what are the modes and what are the home chords of those modes. When I tell you that I'm making a mode of a particular scale, that means I'm just, instead of starting on the root note of that scale, I'm actually starting on a different scale degree. So I would assign the root note to D if I want it to be Dorian. E is Phrygian, F is Lydian, G is Mixolydian, A is Aeolian, B is Locrian. Don't worry, I'm going to put them all up here. You don't have to remember it from me just saying it in a wad like that. But C Ionian is C major. Okay, this is the happy mode. This is your Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do mode. <laughs> And what we do with a scale like this, we design our chords typically in the simplest case as triads. So we'll get the first, the third, and the fifth scale degree. If we go to the D, we would keep the same skip pattern, it'd be D, F, A. If we went to the E, it would be E, G, B. Because in every case, when you're designing a chord, a triad, you're pulling it from a scale and it's from the root note of that scale. Now, we know that there are no flats and sharps in C major. So if we see those, we know that a chord does not belong to C major in terms of the notes. Where people get confused with this is when they go to the interval spelling and it says one, two, flat three, what? There's no flat, yeah. This is where you have to start looking at the semitone numbers, how many frets, how many keys are in between these notes, and go down through, and we can derive the reason why we have the chords that we do in this key, and how the modes are structured, and then convert that into the dot diagrams on the fretboard to understand the scales that we can play over those particular chords, for the most modal sound, but we can also play those notes within the key in any context. That'll be something that we do as we go through the composition part of this. So I'm getting the first, the third, and the fifth. Now I want you to look. C Ionian, it's C major. We know that the first chord ought to be major. So that means that the third scale degree is a major third. That's what defines major and minor in a triad triad meaning three notes and so here we go so from our root note to the third we're going to have to count up a distance of two four and from the third to the fifth we're going to have to count up a distance of one three all of it from the root note to the perfect fifth is seven semitones this is how you determine major minor of a triad of one of your of one of your chords in a major scale. So I'm just going to write that down here. 4 3 equals 7. That is big M major. Okay? Now you're used to looking at this cowboy chord if you've been playing guitar any time at all. So we can kind of examine the intervals here right now on this um, C major chord that we're all used to, the open chord. So your root note occurs right here on the third fret of the A string. And if we were to drop down right here, we know that that is five semitones. But from this formula, the 221, 2221 is telling us that to go from the first to the third in the major chord C major I need to traverse four so if I go back one my finger goes here that is the major third that's four semitones now also going from the root if I want to know what's the fifth plus five plus five that's ten now if I look at what I'm being told here from the root note to the perfect fifth is what four five six seven so ten minus what equals seven minus three one two 
three the open string you had to go a distance you had to let a fret off to go to that open string so that's minus three that puts you on the perfect fifth and so on and so forth you can go through this entire exercise let's just continue on with it so I got 10 coming to here now if I go down this next one which is tuned a major third so four semitones I would now be at 14 so 14 minus 2 gets me to 12 which is what a higher octave of the root note and now I know again that going from this string to going from the second string to the first string to the high E here I'm gonna have five semitones which is a perfect fourth subtract one to the open string and that's a third now I'm not gonna go through this with every single chord as I go through this is gonna be a nine million hour long video if I do that but what I will do is go ahead and show you how I'm gonna derive the D Dorian mode of C major as it is called and this is where we will now see that we have a different structure going from the first scale degree to the third scale degree but when we get to five it all still adds up to seven so this is a minor mode and the way that we can determine how the notes work in this we go to our two two one two 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 one formula up here we simply start at the D as the root note in this case and take the interval structure from there you can also come down and go D to D here on your keyboard to check yourself and you would have to go just just to stay with the white keys in C major now your interval intervals are going to change to one two one one two 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 one two that's what this says to do two one two 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 one and since i didn't show the other octave over here we kick back over to get back to d we add this two all right so now to get my triad i again take the first third and fifth of d dorian and this is going to give me what a minor chord this is a minor mode which will be denoted in this chord diagram with a flat three that is a minor third an interval formula notation so why does this happen well if you look at c ionian going from the first to the third scale degree you had to travel four semitones in the case of d dorian we only have to travel three but to restore to seven so that our fifth is not flatted not yeah not a flat five not a diminished fifth as it is called we then give the second stacked third of this triad that one note back to add the four and in this case your minor formula is 3 4 equals 7 and that's little m always every time that's how it is when you are making chords almost always well definitely with triads we're just looking at triads now you're just stacking thirds so a major chord is a major third stacked on top of a minor third four thir three a minor chord is a minor third stacked on top of a major third three four makes a big difference in the sound and we're going to go through that very soon I do want to go while I have this mode up here and show that in this case since D is the root note and our guitar is tuned E A D so when we get to that D string which is the fourth string of the guitar because we count one two three four five six from small to fat we can get our root note from there so if we were to come down then five semitones to the open 
G string, we would see that at that point we're at a perfect fourth. Well, a perfect fourth is this guy right here. We want to add two frets to get to our fifth. So we go one, two. There's our fifth. Now, the, you do end up in a situation here where you have to move everything up because of the B string. So let me just count this out. Five semitones, four semitones. That's nine. Normally we would have 10. So in order to get to 12, we have to say 10, 11, 12. We had to shift it up by one fret. Everything on the B string is always going to move up one because of that major third interval tuning. Okay, and so the next thing in D minor is we see that when we go down to here, so here we have 5, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, so this one is 15. Well, 15 minus 12 is what? 15 minus 12 to get you back to the original octave on this and not make things confusing for now. Stay within 12. 15 minus 12 is what? 3. Well, 3 semitones is what we're being told here is a minor third. And indeed it is. Now that I've gone through that a little bit painstakingly and kind of set the stage for what the intervals mean in the triads, I'm not going to go painstakingly into this for the rest of them. And in fact, let me just come down here and um, obtain an eraser and clean this up a bit here so we're not looking at garbage. We know that we have to start on the first scale degree and then we go we skip the second, we go to the third, we skip the fourth, we go to the fifth, that's going to give us our stuff. Now is this Phrygian? Is this a minor mode? You bet. It's got three semitones between the E and the G and it's got four semitones between the G and the B. This is this shape of which most of us are familiar. I'm not going to go through the intervallics of it again. You should take that as an exercise off to the self, no, off to yourself, knowing how the semitone intervals occur between the strings based on your tuning. Okay, F is Lydian. This one, again, if we want to get the structure for it, and this is what we do in the next slide. So we can determine interval formulas based on the same root note. That is what's going to help us understand how to actually lay this stuff out on the fretboard. And I'll bring it all back together at the end. But what F to F would be is 2, 2, 2, 1, 2, 2, 1. So here we have it. 2, 2, 1, 2, 2, 1. And that is a major mode between the first and the third. We have four, going to the fifth, we have three, it adds to seven, and this is our usual F major shape. The student can go through and work out those interval formulas yourself and satisfy yourself that th that's what it is for the interest of time. We also have another major mode in C major that derives from G as the root note, which is G mixolydian. So that would be 2-2-1, two, 2-2-1-2. Two, 2-2-1, two, 2-2-1-2. Two, two, one, two. Two, two, one, two, two, one, two. That's going to give us these notes here. A 
Aeolian. This is what's called the natural minor. It's the most usual minor that you're going to play in any kind of pop music when you're in C major. A lot of people get confused. They're like, the key of A minor is not C major. It is, actually. A minor is a mode of C major. That's how that works. It's why it's called the natural minor. When we get into other minor modes, the ones I prefer actually quite a bit more, harmonic minor, um, melodic minor, maybe not so much, but and then some other major modes too, Byzantine, a lot of different scales, they don't have the same structure as this. A minor fits solely in C major, but these are called relative minor key and relative major key. They're the same thing as far as notes are concerned. They're not the same thing depending on what you assign as the root note, and that's what the modes are about. So if we go through again, we'll see A to C we got three, C D we got four, that is a three four, and that would mean that it's a minor mode, and we would expect in a triad that only includes the first or the root, the third and the fifth, that the third would be flatted, it is a minor third, and that's what we see here in this normal dot diagram shape that we're all used to. We can come down here and we can count any of this on the keyboard. I've put it there for your reference in case you need to pause the video and look at that. Alright, and last but not least, the one that the, everybody always just considers kind of the leftovers of this um, operation is actually the Locrian mode. It does have some compositional interest and we'll, we'll see that when I go through in the examples to come. Those are coming, I promise. Um, there's something I want to point out about this right away though. The, the way this intervallic structure ends up, because we only have seven notes in a major key, and because there are 12, you know, semitones of distance there, seven to 12, you're gonna have some offsets. So what we have here is the first going to the third, we would have a minor third, but interestingly, in this case, going to the fifth, we also have a minor third, as the semitone formulas tell us. Now, this stacked minor third relationship is called a diminished chord, and it is, um, it's very tense. It wants to be resolved back to the tonic. Here, I'm showing a diminished chord only playing three strings, the second, third, and fourth. These axes mean you don't play those notes in chord notation, and I actually slid one in on you right here. To keep you from having to block with the finger, if I put this root note here, which I can do, because if we went back, look, it'd be 11, 10, 5, 0, subtracting from 12, gets us back to root here. In that case, you would have to block this string. So what I did was took the opportunity here to put the flat five because the interval from B to F in our BDF triad is only three and three is six means that the fifth came back one. It is a flat five in a diminished chord and a flat three because that first interval from the scale degree one to three is also minor. What I did, I took this flat five and I put it in the bass. This is still, to your ear, the chord B diminished, but here's where the concept of slash chords can be introduced fairly nicely ahead of schedule before I go into inversions in the next video just to give you a taste. This is what's called a slash chord. It's still B diminished by definition because of the way the intervallics are set up and the, the root third, fifth relationship, the way they make your brain hear them. But the slash F simply means that I have put that flat five, that F note in the bass. So your root notes in a higher register, 
them one of the other notes after it. It's not in the normal order. That's called an inversion. And sometimes those are easier to use in fingerings, but you get the same effect. A little different sonic territory, though, a little different sound and character to it. <laughs> So if we look at all of them, here we are. And I'm just hovering over this slide for a long time because I really want to set the stage for what's going on here. Look, you can call these modes the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh mode of C major, all right? You, you can do that. The first mode is just C major, it's Ionian. Second mode is called Dorian. Third is called Phrygian, fourth Lydian, Fifth is Mixolydian, sixth is Aeolian, and seventh is either Locrian or Locrian. I've heard it said both ways, potato, potato. It doesn't really matter. You don't have to learn those Greek names if you want to. I think they're Greek. They're the places from which this type of scale was used a lot more. Accentuated back in like way back times. But anyway, I have a mnemonic if you want to remember it is... I don't particularly like my appointed location. A little negative. I don't particularly like my appointed location. First letter of each, help you remember the first letter of those names. Or you can just call them first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, mo. Do what you want. Doesn't matter as long as you know how to derive the structures. Now, you'll see here. And this is really important going into the next step of this. None of the notes in this chart say flat anything or sharp anything. However, when we looked at the intervallic spellings, the interval formulas on those chord charts, they did say flat three, didn't they? Or they did say three. Those are the only ones that are going flat, except for your diminished, which also had what? A flat five. So you don't see that here. It's super hard to understand when you're in the same key going through the modes, but where you can really start to understand those interval formulas, and you need to, because we laid it out on the fretboard, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, back to one. They will tell you which note to flat, which note to sharp, where to put your fingers, and that's where you learn your patterns of the modes the go with a particular chord. You don't have to play that chord that is the home chord with it. If you know what key you're in, you can play any chord in that key. And you can also just play like the Ionian scale over a modal progression, which accentuates the different mode chords. We're gonna go through all of that. I don't wanna be confusing. The main point here is that when you're looking at notes, they don't tell you flats and sharps in this context of C major. But in terms of interval notation, something's flat. It's either a flat third or a flat fifth as we go through these modes. Some of them are minor, one of them's diminished. Three of them are minor, one of them's diminished. So there you have it, the rest are major modes. So, now what we want to do is go through the process of understanding that we have assigned C major C Ionian two two one two 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 one to mean scale degrees one two three four five six and seven. If you go out on the internet and look for inter interval formulas, they'll be out there, and they won't explain much. At least not in my case. I had a hard time figuring it out, so I just looked at a piano and kind of said, "This isn't this hard. Let me come up with some." materials to understand this. This works for me. I hope it works for you. Now when we get to the next mode, what I want to do is instead of jumping up to D, I have it for reference, I want to look at those semitone patterns. When I come down through C Ionian, how do the intervals between the notes change? They change relative to the start point. So like 
I started to see it's two two one two 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 one, right? We know that one. If I started D, it's two one two 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 one two. If I started E, it's one two 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 one two two. All right, but you're not going to understand interval formulas easily from that unless you keep the root note the same and go out of key. Okay, so in this case, when we go to C Dorian, I want to make this point clear. You are not in C major anymore. In fact, you couldn't be. C Dorian is what? A minor mode. So it can't be a major mode. It can't be C major. What it can do is tell you what this interval formula means. And what that interval formula can tell you, as we will see in the next slides, is exactly where you need to adjust your fingers within the same reference scale to make that mode happen. So let's get on with it. I'm looking at C Dorian now. Okay, so we know we start with C. Just like we did earlier when we did the B major, finding out what the notes were in that different key with 2 2 1, 2 2 2 1. I'm now going to do that very same exercise starting with what I know to be Dorian in the C Ionian C major scale here. I'm going to write those interval, I'm going to write, excuse me, those semitone intervals down here and then I'm going to correct the notes C D E F G A B to work with that interval structure and from there I will look at the note has no flat has no sharp it just stays one two three four five six seven like it was before however if I see a E flat that means I have a flat three okay that third scale degree got flatted that's what this interval formula says. So let's go through this exercise. C to D, two semitones. D to E flat, only one. D to E is two. E flat went back one. One fret back. That's one semitone. E flat to F, that is two because E to F is one. F to G is two. G to A is two. A to B flat is one because A to B is two. B flat to C is 2 because B to C would be 1. We've seen that with the white and black key structure on our piano. I didn't put the piano down here to clutter things up for now in case we want to put some type of information at the bottom here. But what this interval formula now tells me, all right, let me just go through scale degree 1, still 1. Scale degree 2, still 2. Scale degree 3, however, I flatted my E. That's a flat 3. Scale degree four, still four, five still five, six is still six. Seven is no longer seven, it is now a flat seven. All right, now you're still using that two, two, one, two, 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 one original major scale to figure this out you're in a different key now and the way that you can find out what key you are in in any of these modes i go through with the root note held constant you simply look for two two one two 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 one well where does that thing exist let's see two two one two 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 one still there that is the key of b flat major for c dorian okay super duper useful really learn that really learn how these intervals work and take it all back to two two one two 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 one all right here we go so I we kind of know what we're doing now we will go to the e which is the phrygian we're going to keep our c note constant and we're going to determine what is my interval formula that interval formula is going to tell me how do I change my fingering on the guitar to be in a Phrygian mode. And then I would simply move that mode to the root note I needed in for the key I'm playing in. And I play the right notes every time. Works like a charm, I promise you. Now, we go through, we do the same exercise. You kind of know how to do it now. I'm going to just kind of blast through. One semitone from C, D flat. Two semitones, D flat to E flat. E flat to F is 2, F to G is 2, G to 1 is A flat, A flat to B flat is 2, B flat to C is 2. Now when we go through and we look relative to C major, I've got 
one didn't do anything that stays the same it's gonna stay the same um d did something though didn't it it it, it flatted out on me there in the phrygian mode and this is a characteristic note of the phrygian mode in fact d flat is now a flat too i have that highlighted in yellow and while i did you a disservice let me go back to dorian for a moment what makes both of these modes minor is this flat third we saw that with the triads when we were building the home chord we know it's a minor mode but we're going to have some different note character here phrygian is more sinister sounding than dorian by a fairly big long shot because it has a lot of flats in it as we go through we'll see the third is flat fourth isn't g isn't However, we did flat the 6th and we did flat the 7th relevant to Ionian and all of that information is there. So that major 6th is very characteristic of Dorian. It gives it a minor tonality but not so sad sounding. It still maintains a high level of its major character because of that major 6th. Phrygian is the most minor, the most sad and a little bit mystic sounding scale in this set because it has the flat two in it and we're going to hear that so now we just go on down through here okay i'm going to kind of skippy skip to my loo here and just populate the whole thing you understand how i've gone through and come up with these so if you had to do this on your own, you would do it now. Let me just pick one, Lydian. All right, so Lydian, you start with the fourth scale degree, right? If you do, if you forget which one, just count them down. One, two, three. I'm now at the fourth scale degree, but I'm keeping the C as the static root note to determine my interval formula. When I go through, I'll see the only thing that changed was the F is sharp. And in this case, in the interval spelling context of this mode, we're going to call that a sharp four. Now note, it is the same thing, same note, same location as a diminished fifth, a flat fifth, but in the context of Lydian, no. You're going from C up, the four is sharp. That's how we corrected to make this interval notation work that we got from starting at F and going up an entire octave of F, including all of these semitones. Now, just going down through it what's different okay so lydian's very mystic it does have the major third it's a major mode but it has a very different sound same case with mixolydian it sounds quite a bit different it has interesting properties all of these have interesting properties i'll let you decide for yourself what they actually sound like but the tone that's going to change here when we go through our exercise is that we'll have a flat seven in a major key Okay, and if we look at Aeolian, this is the natural minor, we see that it really defines within this key what the natural minor is. That would have the flat third, the flat sixth, the flat seventh. How does Phrygian differ? Only by the flat two. How does Dorian differ? Only by the major sixth. That's why they sound different. It's the start point. What your ear hears is the reference note, the root note. That's what makes the mode sound different and if we look at Locrian it has all the beef of basically it, it's Phrygian is what it is but we flatted the five and now you're really really talking about some tension with that flat five that diminished you're not happy right it's your ear wants to hear that particular seven semitone distance between the one and the five it's off-putting to have stacked minor thirds as we will see before i continue i want to go through each and every one of these and tell you what is 
the key they belong to based on finding the pattern 2212221. Well, here's C Ionian. We just know the Ionian mode is C major. Whatever the root note is, it is that major key. Okay, we did that exercise to determine what the notes would be in B major, in which case there were sharps. In some keys, there will be flats. Those are note notation. They're not going to speak to you about interval scale degree notation formulas. That's why I'm going through this exercise. It's because these numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, sharp four, flat six, flat seven, that's what tells you how to play. Okay, the notes, you have to think of that in real time. Forget it. I mean, it gets confusing because every, every key, it's changing. Uh, just it, it's not as simple especially in an improv situation as thinking of it this way but I'm gonna go down through here now so really C Dorian what is it I'm looking for two two one two 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 one well we did that already two two one two 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 one that is therefore starting on B flat that is B flat major we go to C Phrygian really what you can do also is kind of count back right so I know that one's B flat when I come to Phrygian. Isn't it going to be A flat? Well, yeah, it will because look, two, two, one, two, 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 one, A flat major, so on and so forth. Now we would expect G to give us two, two, one, two, 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 one. G major contains C Lydian. You can also think of that as that's the fourth scale degree in G major, which would be G A B C in generic terms so anyway we continue down through here and we're going to see you just follow the diagonal to find the two two one two 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 one again it tells you which major key you are in Okay, only C major belongs to C major. C Dorian doesn't belong to C major. D Dorian belongs to C major. E Phrygian belongs to C major. C Phrygian belongs to A flat major. Very important. You will trip up a trillion times if you don't understand that. Be playing all the wrong notes or many of the wrong notes.